Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
God is with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Pat, you're muted. Am I on? Am I on? No? You're on, Pat. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. In our first reading, the prophet Zephaniah warns the people of the southern kingdom, Judah, against complacency as he says the day of the Lord is approaching. A reading from Zephaniah, chapter 1, verses 7 and 12 through 18. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed for a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 90, verses 1 through 12. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday, when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength, even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of wrath, who rightly fears your indignation. So teach us, the, teach us the number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Paul calls on the Christians of Thessalonica to prepare for the return of Jesus, a reading from Thessalonians. 
Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you beloved are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not in the dark or in darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet of hope and salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, for indeed you are doing. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be as when a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, you good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents came forward saying, Master, you handed me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my, my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to all who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You got a relief this morning after that Old Testament lesson from Zephaniah. You didn't have to all join in saying, thanks be to God. Randy just had to do that. That's a hard one to say, thanks be to God after it's a tragic reading, but I think there's some words for us in that reading. It comes from the year approximately 630 BC. It was a very difficult time for people. It was a time of very corrupt kings ruling over that southern kingdom of Judah. They were faithless people, those leaders. People tended to blame the leaders for what was going on, but 
you really can't do that because I think societies often get the leadership that they deserve. People had not so much of an idea against God. They just didn't believe much of anything. The 12th verse of that first chapter of Zephaniah says this clearly. Zephaniah has God saying of the people, repeating words that they said, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. You hear what they were really saying? It wasn't just that the Lord wouldn't do either good or bad. They were really saying, the Lord can't do anything, is capable of nothing. They were really saying, God doesn't really even exist. Therefore, worship is a sham. It's just a habit that some people get into. There was no real belief behind anything. The moral center of their lives was lost. And indeed, the center of all life, not just their spiritual life, but all of life was lost. A new day was coming. Zephaniah calls it the day of the Lord, but it was the day of a new king whose name was Josiah. And the people who worked with Josiah would make a discovery in the temple. They would discover the book of the law that had been lost, the rules that people were to follow in their lives. And Josiah would ask that everybody repent and have a public day of the reading of these laws. And they read them and people fell on their knees and repented. It was indeed something like the day of the Lord and people turned back. But up till that time of Jeremiah, it was rather hopeless. It's a horrible thing to say about the people of God. The Lord will do no good. Neither will he do harm. It's a hopeless sense of being lost. And yet, these were the people to whom was entrusted the word of God. These were the people who had the story of creation, which we have passed on to us in the book of Genesis. These were the people who had the story of God's leading God's people out of slavery in Egypt, which we have recorded in the book of Exodus. These were the people who were led into a new land, which is recorded in the books that follow in Exodus and the others. These were the people who were ruled by judges, and we hear this in the books of Judges and Samuel, of judges who ruled the people like Gideon and Deborah. Deborah, indeed, was our alternate reading we could have had for this day. But they didn't really know this and honor this tradition. They were a people wandering aimlessly, and that's the tragedy. Indeed, it's a tragic thing to say about people that they had no hope, neither did they have any, did they think God would do anything. I think it's probably the most tragic verse in the entire Bible. They had lost their center, their meaning. And the marvelous acts of God in their lives was lost until it was found again under Josiah. God, they thought, was no longer around. C.S. Lewis compared this time to a child playing with a toy lion. The child could play happily with a lion and make it do whatever the child wanted the lion to do. If the lion suddenly came to life, the child would be horrified. But that wasn't really real as the child saw it or as the people of Zephaniah's time saw it. It was a tragic time, a real tragedy. But I think it's a story not just about that time, but about the time of Jesus and even about our own time. I think that's what Jesus was getting about in the parable that he told people this morning, the parable of the talents. A lot of people think that you need to look for line by line meaning, item by item meaning to what the items in the parable compare to in real life. 
But I think what Jesus was about was about one central point he wanted to make by the parables he was using. He used the story of talents, which were coins in his time. But Jesus wasn't really talking about money. He wasn't offering us investment advice that you go and double whatever you have or, and you don't bury it. I don't think that's what he was saying at all. I think he was repeating words that we prayed this morning in the collect for this day. Words about our story, our story in scripture. What do we do with that story that's been given to us? Well, this collect is all about that. The collect says we should hear those words in scripture, but not only that, not just hear them, we should read them. We should mark them, make notes about them. And then it goes on with a strange line, we should inwardly digest them. I said in the meditation this morning that we eat food and drink water or other fluids in order to sustain our lives, our physical lives. This inwardly digestion of scripture is asking us to inwardly digest these words so that they may feed our spiritual life just as food and beverage feeds our physical life. And I think that's the point that Jesus was making. And then there was one of those big so that's in that collect. So that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. In other words, that we may have hope, that our lives may have meaning, that we don't go around hopeless like those people in Zephaniah's time, but rather find the meaning and purpose and center of our lives. Back to the parable. I think Jesus was saying that those who received the five talents and those who received the two talents went on and dealt wisely with them. They told the story, this gift given to them, they shared that story so that others could find hope and meaning in their lives. The five were doubled to 10, the two were doubled to four. But then the other person, the third person, just buried that talent. It's what happens with so much in life. We know the story. We know what God is doing for us, but we bury it. Like that man who buried that one talent. We put it away where it can't do harm to us or do good to anyone else either. I think we live in a world that's much like the time of Zephaniah, where people would say, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do harm. That God doesn't really have much to say to us today. It's hopeless, a hopeless time, a time that really needs the good news that we Christians have. And I think we're in a world where people hunger for the good news. And we're the people who have the stories. We have what Jesus was referring to as talents to share. We have the talent of the good news to give to others. You don't know the story? The advice from our collect is hear it, read it, mark it, learn it inwardly digest it so that you may know the story and be able to share it with others. Are you embarrassed to tell the story? Embarrassed that people might think you were weird if you start giving these gospel stories to others, stories of faith to others? That's a risk. People might think you were weird or strange or some kind of Bible thumper. But it's the challenge that we have that was reflected in our baptismal covenant. Remember those words we were asked in our covenant? They were indeed painted on a wall in Bethlehem, outside of Bethlehem, the wall that the Israelis put up around the Palestinian settlements. One of those baptismal covenants rules was this. Will you pledge to Will you proclaim by word and example 
the good news of God in Christ. Will you tell the story? And we answer, I will with God's help. We're really saying, I will act. I will hear, learn, read, mark, and inwardly digest, and I will share that story to bring hope to others in a world that desperately needs it, our world today. We can make a difference in our world, one person at a time. And that's what these readings today and our college is all about. My friends, let's make a difference. Amen. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jan, we're not hearing audio from your end, but you don't look muted. Still no sound there. <laughs> Debbie, I can go ahead and take this on. Okay. We'll begin the prayers of the people, Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, and that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Jennifer, our bishop, Bill, our priest in charge, our companion diocese, Brasilia, and their bishop, Mauricio, more in the Sudan and their bishop, Reuben, the people of Haiti, and Zache, their bishop. In our, <clears throat> in our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Cylon, extra-provincial of the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Right, right Reverend DeLore Ranjit Canagaspi, Bishop of Cambo, Colombo, and the Right Reverend Kishthiri Fernando, Bishop of Kurunga Gala. We pray for our diocese partners, St. James Church Vincennes, the Reverend John Kidrick, the Reverend Mary Becker, and all the baptized and all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. 
we pray for Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Eric, our governor, Thomas, our mayor, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. We pray for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for an end to racism and all the isms that divide God's human creation. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who are hospitalized. Betty Burl, Joyce Stout, Ken Bacon, those in convalescent centers, Teddy Fada, Anna Mae Gillette, Sonia Hurley, Betsy Hyde, Barbara Moffat, Carol Smalley, those who work to protect us, including the police, firefighters, and emergency personnel of our communities. We pray for our men and women in the armed forces, Audrey McMillan Cole, Chastain Gardner, Jessica Holliday, Brandon Hallowell, Greg Chas Hewlett, Micah Jones, Chris Call, Brian Casper, Amanda Conover McAllister, Tyler McKeon, Melissa Payne, Nathan Payne, Travis Reeve, Allison Woodruff, and Zach Webb. We pray for we pray for those who are homeless, unemployed, or underemployed, for all who suffer from COVID-19, and for the caregivers who look after them, those who suffer from the wildfires in the West, those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for our parish family, especially for Ross Buckman, whose birthday is today, for Jan Foster, whose birthday is tomorrow, and for Elizabeth Wepler, whose birthday is Wednesday. In our daily prayers for the members of our, our parish, we pray today for Hannah McGillory and her children, Zach and Linda, for Susan McGill McGivory, McGilvery and her grandchildren, Marin and Laren, Laren and Maisie Beam, give to Bernie Began, Larry Reef, Jeremy Youngsfelt, and to all those departed eternal rest that light perpetual shine upon them. We pray, pray for you, for all your saints, that we that have entered into joy, may we come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, a lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly <clears throat> repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and me. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
You're muted, Janet. Oh, now am I okay, Debbie? Okay. God is with you. Let us pray. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all of my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until, by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mike Allen, did we lose you? Lord of the feast, we thank you for gathering us as your people. We call to remembrance the many times we have been fed at your table and we lament our distance now. Be present, Lord Jesus, as you were present with your disciples. Be known to us in the breaking of the bread and may your Holy Spirit sustain us and all your church until we can gather again, together again. We ask this for the sake of your love, amen. The blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
grow in the peace, rejoicing in God's presence with us. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.